Hi everybody, this is going to be a short introduction to using Git as a solo developer. This is for people who are completely new to the idea of Git. It's how I started using it um, and it's a good way to start using it this way and then as you build your confidence do some more advanced stuff later on. And I'm entirely just using the default stuff that comes if you download Git um, and no other kind of uh, plugins or GUIs. So Git is a version control system and it's a really good way of, of giving you that confidence to be able to work on your code and make changes and, and not worry about making massive errors and, and breaking things because you've always got this series of what we call commits where your code or your project is in a state where you know it works. And you add a new feature, you test it, and once you're sure it's working, you commit it to your repository. So I've got a simple um, setup here to show you. So I've got this project I've called Antelope Catcher. I've got one um, source file here. It works on any kind of uh, text files. Um, and I'm going to, I've installed all the Git tools. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do Git GUI here. Um, so I'm gonna use the Git the GUI because that's how I originally started using it. Um, eventually you'll probably want to use the command line, but for now, like just to get the concepts sorted in your head, I, I recommend using the GUI to start with. So I want to create a new repository. Um, so I'm going to click create and then it wants to know what directory um, that my repository should be created in. And it should be the kind of upper directory that all your source files are in. So in this case, I've got, I've, only, I've not got any subfolders, um, but this is the folder that I'm going to add here. So I'm going to click create. And then what you'll see is in this folder, uh, it's created a .git hidden folder which has got all the kind of the history and all, all the stuff that we need um, all the stuff that git needs and this is the the GUI for git the, the one that kind of comes with it and there are three windows here well four windows that you need to know about the first one here is unstaged changes and these are changes that we haven't staged um, and if I click on this you can see it's one of our source files now I need to tell git that this is a file that I want to keep track of and the way I do that initially is by left clicking on the little icon there and it will add it to the stage changes and it says these will commit and I can see what the changes are here and because it's gone from no file to a file they're all green pluses and then here is where I write my commit message now, the initial commit almost always is just initial um, commit. I'm also going to sign it off. Um, you'll have to set this up in your preferences to add your name and stuff. And I'm just going to click commit. And now that's committed. And what I can do now is I can make a change. So let's say I want to add a new feature. So I'm going to add um, something here. Um, and then I'm going to do rescan, which rescans all the files in the directory. And you can see here in unstaged changes, I've got the change I just made. So it's removed that line it was before and added the new thing that I, I typed here. So I've on it. So what I would do is I'd test this change, make sure I was happy with it, and then it worked fine. Then I would click. Uh, then I stage the files I want to um, commit. And you can see it's staged here. And then um, I can type in a commit message that describes what the change was. Only um, confused antelopes are added. And then I sign off and I commit. And that's added that new change. And so I can keep working like this. Um, so I could add something else, new change like this. Um, and then Rescan, and I could say made another change, sign off and commit. And I can keep doing that. And why this is really useful is that if I'm working on, so let's say I, I did this commit and then I started testing it, you know, I did some testing and then I went and tested it again and realized, oh no, there is something wrong actually. Um, I can look if I found a bug, I could go um, or found a newly introduced bug. I can go and visualize master's history 
and see a history of all my commits and every change I made with my little message saying why I made that change. And what I can do, one thing I can do is I can, the most recent commit, I can revert it. So I can right click on it and click revert this commit and it automatically then undoes the change. So now if I open this file, it's changed and it's, already, and it's committed that for me. So it's here in the history. I can also, let's say that I want to add like a, a, a big new feature. Um, so I'm going to say lots of experimental stuff. So I do lots of experimental stuff. You know how it is. Like maybe I spend an hour or two doing something and realizing that actually it ends up I don't want this new stuff in my code. And, and like I, I do that all the time. Or maybe you, you break something and it breaks it in such a way that you don't really want to you don't want to commit these local changes. You just want to go back to how it was before. Well, what we can do is if I click commit, so uh, if I do a rescan, you can see the changes here. I can click commit and revert changes. And what that says is, do you want to revert? It then tells me, do I want to revert the changes in this file? If I click revert changes, it then takes it out and pulls it back to what it was um, at the kind of, the latest commit in the repository. And so that's it in a nutshell. Um, it's a very, it, it's a way of you, to, giving you that confidence to experiment and try things, knowing you can always go back and see everything you've changed. Now, I know some people probably are gonna watch this and say, oh, well, you should use the command line or this isn't, you're not doing it properly, you need to do it this way or that way. Yes, as you get more confident, there are going to be different and better ways of you using this. But this is how I learned originally. Um, and when you're working on your own, this is like the basic how I want you to start. A lot of people, their first introduction to Git is in like a software group project, maybe in their degree. And when you're working in teams, Git is incredibly useful, but also you can end up uh, making mistakes when you're not really clear on a lot of the terms and I've spoken to students before who they've in their group project they were working on the git and they did something and, and they messed the git up and then their team mates have been like oh don't touch git anymore just don't do it because you're going to break things and that's that's not good and so if you're kind of a little bit unsure about git start this way work this way for a while know that there's all sorts of features for, for example, there's things you can do. You can create branches um, and you can check out old commits that may be, because what can sometimes happen is you might introduce a bug at this stage that you don't notice until much, much further down. Um, and there are different tools and things that normally you have to use the command line. There's probably ways of doing it in the GUI, but at some point you end up having to use the command line to make those, um, to do kind of more powerful stuff. But just Google it and, and read the documentation. The other thing that people, that I haven't done here, is that this is all locally on my machine. Um, so this is just, I've created the Git. So all, all the kind of Git repository stuff is all locally on my machine. What this doesn't do, which a lot of people find useful, is it's, it doesn't have what's called the remote repository. So what you can do is you can go on, uh, GitHub is probably the, the, the um, tool most people use, set up an account, and then you can actually push your um, Git repository to that server. And then you've also got a backup. And so every time you implement something new, you know it's working, you push your code, you commit it, back it up, and it's like this really big safety net that it gives you. Um, but first things first, kind of understand the basics, get used to using this tool, and then move on to kind of the more advanced stuff. And if you'd like me to do some videos on that more advanced stuff, uh, let me know. And thanks for watching.